to put it shortly, Euron is one of the most evil, terrifying, and mysterious men in the entire A Song of Ice and Fire book series. He spent years in exile, sailing the oceans. He's been to Valyria and lived to tell the tale. The real Valyria, not the crappy show version of Valyria with the stone men. The true Valyria, whose ruins wait in the center of the smoking sea. This place is so cursed that people won't even sail miles within it. Euron not only went there, but returned with artifacts. Valyrian steel armor, a magic horn that supposedly has the power to bind dragons to his will, and he has a ship called the Silence with black sails and a red hull and deck to hide the blood from all the messed up crap that he's doing. The ship is full of people that have all had their tongues cut out so they can't tell his secrets, and he's using all of this knowledge that he's gained in some huge plan that involves all of this strange dark magic. Euron, more than anything, I think, believes that he can become a god. He wants to be worshipped, and he's willing to do anything to accomplish this. Euron is a complete psychopath, and he's one of the most dangerous men on the face of the planet, pushing the Ironborn to return to their older, more brutal ways. In comparison, the show version of Euron is a total f boy. If there is an example of a worse book-to-show character adaptation than Euron Greyjoy, then I'm not aware. When Euron first shows up in the show, I wasn't immediately turned off. At that point in the timeline, book to show, everything was pretty much misaligned. So he shows up during a storm on the bridge and kills his brother Balon. He even has the line, I am the drowned god, which implies that he may be in fact a representation of his book counterpart. In the novels, Euron has been banished from the Iron Islands by Balon for the rape of his brother Victarion's wife. He only returns after Balon's death. In the novels, it is suggested in a prophecy by the Ghost of Highheart, another character with magical leanings that's cut from the show, that a faceless man was sent to kill Balon. I dreamt of a man without a face, waiting on a bridge that swayed and swung. On his shoulder perched a drowned crow with seaweed hanging from its wings. So, it's heavily implied that Euron has amassed a great amount of wealth in his travels and was able to hire a faceless man to kill his brother, which honestly makes the most sense because in returning to the Iron Islands while Balon lived, he ran the risk of being recognized and having to face the consequences of that. Once Balon was dead, Euron could return to shake the balance of power. But I wasn't too upset with seeing Euron on the bridge. He didn't have the eye patch, but I thought they were at least respecting the spirit of the character for the most part. But, it's all downhill from here. Oh, the king's moot. Fuck. Talk about disappointment. The king's moot is such a grand epic scene in the books. All of the Ironborn gather on this one island, amongst the bones of this giant long-dead sea creature named Naga, who had been slain by the Grey King long ago. All of these potential rulers make their cases, including Asha, who is Yara in the show, and Victarion, who is omitted from the show. Then, suddenly, a terrible sound roars through the air. Euron is having one of his men sound the Dragon Binder, the Hellhorn from lost ancient Valyria, and it's like the most piercing, awful sound. Sharp as a sword thrust, the sound of a horn split the air. Bright and baneful was its voice, a shivering hot scream that made a man's bones seem to thrum within him. The cry lingered in the damp sea air. It was a terrible sound, a wail of pain and fury that seemed to burn the ears. Aaron damp hair covered his and prayed for the drowned god to raise a mighty wave and smash the horn to silence. Yet still the shriek went on and on. It is the horn of hell, he wanted to scream, though no man would have heard him. That guy that's blowing the horn collapses and dies. He literally cooks from the inside out because it's ancient Valyrian magic and no mortal man shall sound this horn and live. And Euron, being the charismatic guy that he is, convinces the Ironborn that they can return to their past glory and beyond. He says that they will have dragons because this horn can bind dragons to their will. So, I imagine if you haven't read the books, then you're probably like, what the heck? None of that happened. I know, right? So in the show, we get this scene in a sense, but it's scraped down to its bare bones and further. The diminished scale of this in the show compared to the book is the most jarring. 
to the point where it's almost comical to a book reader. Euron looked cool on the bridge during the storm at night, but in the daylight, he just looks like some guy. Not at all the vibe that you get in the book version. Then, there is also the part where he starts to speak. I'm going to Gadavan, right over, and give it to Daenerys Targaryen, along with my big cock. Instead of menacing and mysterious, Euron comes across as an arrogant frat boy. It becomes quickly apparent in this scene that Euron is not representing the character in which George R. R. Martin envisioned. We, as readers, should expect the showrunner to maintain a reasonable degree of loyalty in their portrayals. This show was initially sold as George R. R. Martin's story brought to the small screen, and that's what it was until they started progressively more and more taking liberties with characters. So, not only does Euron's look totally fail to represent the book counterpart, but his personality is divergent as well. Personally, I would rather him represent the spirit of the character rather than the look, but in this case we get neither. From this point on, the Ironborn plot moves in a totally different direction than in the books. They are not even remotely similar. So why bother even contrasting them at the point? I'm just going to talk about the show. In the show, Yar and Theon steal most of the Iron Fleet, and Euron declares that he will build a thousand ships my initial reaction is okay, but how? The Iron Islands are pretty barren and there are very few trees. They would have to go and attack someone else's land in order to get wood for these ships. Something like this would spark a tremendous amount of conflict, especially when we're talking about a thousand ships. That's a lot of wood. Also, it takes time to build ships. In A Feast for Crows, Cersei is having several ships constructed, less than ten, and it takes months. But we see Euron next season and he suddenly got all these ships. Where did he get the resources for this? And these ships are all fancy with elaborate prow designs and painted hulls and sails with huge sigils. How did he have the time to do this? It makes no sense. And there's no mention of how we're just expected to accept this. And this is also around the time that they start to slightly blend Euron with the character Victarion from the books. We get a scene where he attacks Yara's fleet and he's got an axe and he's like a maddened warrior. To me, this is more akin to something that Victarion would do in the novels. Euron is the type that lets others carry out his dirty work. Yes, he has committed atrocities on his own with his own hand, but mostly he would rather deploy others to do his bidding. Euron also in the show has a bunch of creepy interactions with Jamie in the show where they're talking about like sex stuff with Cersei. I don't get anything out of these weird scenes, but if you do, then cool, I guess. I just struggled to find anything interesting to say about Euron's character in the show. He's simply uninteresting. We've seen this type of guy before. This entire plot line, King's Moot onward is the embodiment of just mediocre storytelling and there's just not very much depth to the character Euron at all. Euron isn't the most annoying character, but the decline in depth from book to show is too jarring to ignore. What does Euron even want in the show? What are his motivations? To become king by marrying Cersei? Well, he's an idiot if he thinks that Cersei is actually going to marry him, so if that is his plan, then double fuck him. Because that will never work. If this was book Euron, and book Cersei, then maybe Euron and Cersei could marry, but these characters are in totally different places book to show, and what would make sense in one scenario wouldn't necessarily make sense in another. In conclusion, I wouldn't be totally shocked if they pull out something surprising with Euron, maybe have him getting the upper hand on Cersei in some way, but I just can't see it happening in a way which would be convincing, considering all that's happened so far. Mostly, I just feel disappointed about this character and what he could have been. The showrunners merely chose not to adapt Euron, and that's all there is to it. This guy is not Euron Greyjoy. He doesn't look like Euron Greyjoy. He doesn't talk like Euron Greyjoy. He's not even around the same characters that Euron Greyjoy is around. Damp Hair isn't a character. Victarion isn't a character. He doesn't have any of the things that he has in the book. He doesn't have his eye patch that covers up his blood eye, this mysterious blood eye that he has. His ship, the silence, isn't really the silence. It doesn't look like the silence. It doesn't have the mutes on it. 
So how can we call this guy Euron? This is not Euron. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, like and subscribe, and peace out.